So you wanna be a software developer or a software engineer or a web developer or whatever you wanna call it. You wanna code for a living. In this video, I'm gonna give you some tips advice and information about how you can do just that. Before we get started, please make sure you subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and please like this video if it's useful to you. It's worth a lot more to me than it is to you, so that would be great help. There are probably three main avenues you can take to achieving your dream. Okay, I won't speak for you, but as someone who's made that career change myself, it's definitely been my dream job. The most obvious path is studying computer science or software engineering at university. This is definitely a great option if you can afford to go to university and you're just coming out of school, You'll go in-depth into topics like algorithms, understanding operating systems, engineering design, and architectural concepts. You'll also learn several programming languages and concepts, but it takes years, and I don't know how much actual program you'll end up doing. This is not the route that I took. The second route that you can take is through a coding bootcamp. Now don't let the term bootcamp scare you off. This is what I did, and it changed my life. Uh, I said coding, coding bootcamp, not actual bootcamp. Also, I had the best time and I would totally do it all over again. So I'm definitely biased towards this approach, but I know it's not for everyone. A coding bootcamp definitely has its pros and cons. So before deciding which route you wanna take, you'll need to weigh out the pros and cons of each option. The great thing about this approach is that you'll learn as much as you possibly can in a short period of time, usually about 12 weeks. You'll probably be attending classes all day between nine to five, either in person or more commonly during the pandemic over Zoom. The day doesn't end there though, as you'll be given an assignment to work on throughout the evening, or if it's project week, you'll be working on your project all throughout the day. All of that means you're learning heaps, you're making regular GitHub commits, and you're building projects you can show to prospective employers. You'll probably learn the basics of at least two programming languages. Sorry, I'm not counting HTML and CSS, but I should. So at least four programming languages, some frameworks, and you'll get an introduction to various programming tools. With the advent of the Zoom era, most prominent boot camps, including my alma mater, General Assembly. Wait, can I say alma mater even though it's not a crazily expensive American university <laughs> began remote classes as a way to cater for those who weren't able to make it into the campus every day. This means that it doesn't matter where you live anymore. You can attend one of these boot camps no matter where you are, as long as you've got a good internet connection. I took the web development immersive course at General Assembly in Sydney in early 2016. The course is now called Software Engineering Immersive, but I think the curriculum is probably very similar apart from using more up-to-date frameworks and tools. We spent the first week or so getting familiar with tools such as the command line and Git, as well as general programming concepts. We learned the basics of HTML and CSS and put together our first website using those. We then started on JavaScript, including learning jQuery and DOM manipulation, and it culminated in our first project week, where we were given a few days to build a tic-tac-toe clone. This tic-tac-toe was the first project that most of us had in our GitHub accounts. When you think about it, you're only three weeks into learning how to code and you've already got something built which is actually a pretty amazing field. We also learned Ruby on Rails, but the curriculum for the course now appears to mostly concentrate on JavaScript and front and back end frameworks using JavaScript. They also introduce you to Python and Django, which is a pretty great combination. The course at General Assembly at the time cost me 11,500 Australian dollars, but the price did go up quite a bit soon after. There are plenty of options other than General Assembly, but I'm gonna use them as a benchmark here, as that's who I use, and they have campuses in quite a few locations around the world. They also do remote, as I mentioned already. So let's take a look at the pricing for 2022. If we take Boston in America, for example, full tuition is gonna cost you almost 16,000 US dollars. In London, it'll set you back 9,000 pounds. In Singapore, they're charging 14,650 Singapore dollars. And in Sydney, it now costs 15,500 Aussie dollars. GA do offer payment plans if you can't pay the money up front. And in some cases, there may also be grants available if you qualify. All that said about GA, I would definitely recommend it myself, but make sure you shop around. If you don't live in a country with a GA campus, there might be some local options that suit you better, especially if the cost is too high. I would definitely suggest though that you make sure whatever bootcamp you attend, that they have an outcomes program. At GA, they stop just short of guaranteeing you a job once you graduate, they have an outcomes team that will do everything they can to assist you with your goal of getting your job as a developer. To me, this program is definitely a big reason why it's worth spending the money. There's also a great community of GA alumni, so by simply attending courses there, you're introduced to what is now a pretty big network of graduates already working in the industry. Finally, you can teach yourself how to code. You won't necessarily have access to the same resources you would have had at a university or bootcamp, but you do have access to the greatest informational resource going, the internet. Not only that, but you can pretty much learn everything you need to learn for free. So if money is an issue for you, or you're not quite ready to quit that job, 
and you're prepared to wait a bit longer to make that career change, then maybe this is the best way forward for you. The absolute best place to start is at Free Code Camp. This is an unbelievable resource to learn programming. And as the name suggests, it's absolutely free. They have various certificates available, all of which amount to about 300 hours of exercises and lessons each, from responsive web design to JavaScript algorithms, Python, and information security certificates. On top of all of this, they have a YouTube channel with over 1,000 videos on pretty much any programming topic you can think of. And while you're on YouTube, there are hundreds, if not thousands of people like me offering free programming tutorials on all sorts of topics. For example, my tutorial on how to build a Wordle clone using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which I'll link to in the description below. And then you have high quality programming tutorials in places like Udemy, Frontend Masters, Egghead.io, and so on. So if you've done some of the free CodeCamp certifications, for example, and you wanna expand your skill set and build a few apps for your portfolio, these courses and the YouTube videos are great resources. I'll probably include part-time courses at places like General Assembly Offer and the Teaching Yourself to Code category. Technically, they are teaching you, but you're generally not learning enough through the part-time courses. So you'll still need to go out on your own and do a lot of self-learning before being ready to work as a developer full-time. Once you've taken one of these three paths, you want to start the process of looking for an actual job. At this point, you should have a portfolio of projects that you built at university, through your bootcamp, or on your own. You should also have a personal portfolio site that you have ideally built yourself. Don't use a template builder like Squarespace or Wix. At this point, you should be able to build your own. If you're not design orientated, that's totally okay. You can take inspiration from any site on the web and use that to design your portfolio. Your site should include some links to the projects that you've worked on, a list of skills that you've picked up, and a short bio about you and your history. But leave the heavy text and details for your LinkedIn page. Finding a job on a job board as a junior is gonna be super hard. Most jobs listed on job boards, especially those posted by recruiters, are likely to be looking for someone with a bit more experience than you have at this point. You need to put yourself out there and start networking as much as you can. This could be creating a Twitter profile and marketing yourself that way, or attending meetups if you can. Most larger cities will have some meetups for developers fairly regularly. They're a great way to go and introduce yourself to people and get a foot in the door. It was actually at a meetup that I met the people that gave me my first job as a developer. Other ways to network could be finding Slack or Discord communities. You might find these by again, attending meetups, signing up for courses, or just following the right people on Twitter. People like Kent C. Dodds or West Boss, for example. LinkedIn is definitely a tool that is worth using as well. As a junior, you'll probably need to reach out to hiring managers directly. You might find a lot of junior roles are not advertised online. And by targeting companies that you'd like to work for, you can try and get in touch with the right people and show them that you are eager, interested in working with them and available whenever the next opportunity comes up. Personally, it took me about three months after graduating from General Assembly to land my first role. There was certainly a good bit of frustration and heartbreak along the way, especially after I had watched most of my classmates get hired before me. But that first job was amazing and I feel like I couldn't have ended up in a better place than I did. During those three months, I made a big old list of companies and jobs that I was targeting but I also continued to learn. I started taking courses on Udemy pretty much immediately after I graduated. I was really keen to start learning React and React Native, and I started building my own projects as soon as I had enough experience to do so. Being able to demonstrate to a hiring manager that you are capable and interested in continuing to upskill will help you stand out as a junior. If you're at the early stage of making a career change into web development, just remember that it can be done if you work hard and make use of all the resources around you. Personally, it's been unbelievably rewarding and I can't stress how much it has all been worth it. Also, I was 36 when I started at GA and I wasn't even the oldest in my class. So don't let age stop you either. Maybe we can talk about that in another video. A while ago, I did a video on how to keep up with new tech as a developer. So I'll put that on the screen for you here if you wanna check it out. That's it for now. Thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next video.